Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Alec Van Hook and I'm the acting United States Attorney. I'm joined today with uh, some of our federal law enforcement partners. Aaron Crawford is here. He's in charge of our Project Guardian and Project Safe Neighborhood Initiative here in Shreveport. And I have Paul Seal, who's uh, the local leader of our DEA office here, and Ron Meadows, who's the local uh, leader of our ATF office here. And all of us are glad to welcome our state partners, uh, Judge uh, Stewart, our district attorney, Sheriff Prater, Chief Raymond, and uh, Chief White, Deputy Chief White. I believe that's the right title. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we're all here today to talk about our efforts to reduce violent crime in Shreveport. And we are joined by some other uh, community leaders and elected officials, and we welcome their presence here today. But this is a law enforcement briefing, and so only members of law enforcement will be speaking here. But I would encourage members of the press to talk to some of our other leaders in the community about some of the community efforts that they're undertaking to help fight this uh, problem in our city as well. You know, I've always said that the most basic responsibility of our government is to ensure the safety of our people. And for far too much of 2020, the people of Shreveport have had to endure rising violent crime and homicide rates. And all of this violent crime is primarily driven by illegal possession of guns and illegal trafficking of narcotics. So to address this problem, we are adding additional resources to our Project Guardian and Operation Legend initiatives. Some of you have gotten our press information that goes into a little bit more t detail about these initiatives, but essentially, the aim of Project coordinates uh, local law enforcement to tackle violent crime together. We want Shreveport to a place to raise families, to go to school, to go to work, and just live a safe, free from fear. We want to take the most violent offenders off of our streets and take back our community. Operation Legend is an operation that was basically after a little boy who lost his life while he was sleeping in his bed and was shot when the bullet traveled through the walls. And unfortunately, that's happening right here in Shreveport. And so what we're doing today is to address some of these problems. Shreveport's not an Operation Legend city, but we have the same problems that the larger cities have. The United States Attorney's Office, the ATF, the DEA, and the FBI are committed to working with our law enforcement partners to bring additional federal prosecutions and investigations and for us to work hand in hand to rid our streets of violent uh, gun toters and drug traffickers. We work hand in hand every day with the district attorney's office. We work together to coordinate resources to determine what would be the best place to prosecute these crimes. We work hand in hand with the sheriff and the police chief. Mr. Crawford talks to police officers and sheriff deputies every day for us to try to figure out the best place to bring these uh, violent criminals to justice. How does federal law enforcement help this initiative? First, it frees Judge Stewart's office up to prosecute and work on other things, rapes, murders, aggravated assaults. If we can bring more federal case, gun cases here, more nar narcotics cases here, it allows him to deploy his limited resources to do other things. Secondly, and equally important, is when someone is arrested for federal charges, they are detained. They sit in jail until their time comes. And then once they're convicted, they go to jail for a substantial period of time. Taking a violent offender off the street while, and let them sit in jail to wait, await their trial removes the threat that they provide to the citizens of this city. What we're doing here, we know, is a recipe for success. Time and time again, when federal drug gun prosecutions go up, violent crime goes down. And we, Judge Stewart and I were speaking earlier in the week how we were all a little bit knocked off by the coronavirus pandemic. But that is over, and we are here, and we're going to take these streets back. One of the most important parts of this strategy are the brave men and women of the Shreveport Police Department and the Cattle Pair Sheriff's Office. These people get up every morning and go to work and risk their lives on our behalf. And we are here to support them. There's no harder job, but there's also no job that is more noble and more rewarding, and we have their back. We also need the people who live in our communities to help. People in the communities have to take their streets back too. If you see something, say something. 
Work with the police, work with your friends and neighbors to rid our streets of violent crime. Tragically, it seems like sometimes the bad guys are getting the upper hand. Since May of 2020, there have been shootings in Shreveport where at least 10 innocent children have been shot. Some of them have been killed. Many Shreveport neighborhoods are filled with the sounds of gunshots ringing out through the night, causing their parents of these children to worry about the very survival of their children, and that is unacceptable. Our efforts are to honor these people, honor these victims, protect the good people of the city of Shreveport, and to take our streets back. Now with that, I'd like to turn over this over to our uh, local law enforcement partners, and we'll be glad to take some questions after that. Judge? Good morning. I would like to first thank the U.S. Attorney's Office. Uh, there has been a continuous conversation between our office and the U.S. Attorney's Office, even during the pandemic, to identify and make sure we're both working in the same direction without duplicating efforts. I want to thank also the sheriff, the police chief, and other first responders for the good work they do. Despite what you read, we communicate 24 hours a day, every day, in order to interdict in the community and deal with violent uh, offenders. This cooperative partnership is a great example of what happens when we all work together. And so what I want to ask is that we need the public to step up. We can't work without information and evidence. So we need you to just take a stance and say, look, we're tired of this, we're gonna move forward. We see what law enforcement is doing and we wanna join in with them. If you step up and help us, then we can be more, uh, we can just move forward a lot easier. As we talk, we're trying murder cases in Caddo District Court. We have the U.S. Attorney's Office helping us with other cases. That way, we'll, uh, we'll go forward. It's a process, it's gonna take a while, but with your public's help and the help of the first responders, we will be able to go forward. Thank you. All right, appreciate y'all being here. Sometimes I never know how I'm going to express myself and say something. I know what I mean to say, but I don't use a script very often, I probably should. One of the biggest problems we have is violence. We have seriously and do something with them. We also have to deal with this catch and release mentality that we have. Everyone that we seem to arrest for a violent crime has been arrested before, over and over and over. When we have to catch them again, they're meaner, they're stronger, they're wiser, and we have to fight them harder. And that's what you read about in the paper, is when we have to fight them because they're resisting arrest, these violent criminals. So we need, I need, I need the media to do something. I'd like the media, I challenge you to do something. I challenge you to spend as much time researching the backgrounds, criminal backgrounds of those we arrest for violent crimes. Spend as much time researching their background as you do health violations at restaurants, okay? Or fill in sandbags. Do something meaningful for us in law enforcement so we don't have to continuously fight these people. We want the public to understand this catch and release program has got to stop. We've got to take all violent, illegal possession of firearms from, with violent people, We've got to take that seriously. I was thinking this morning about what the, if you had a problem with frogs in your backyard keeping you up all night, so you got up and you caught all the frogs, and then you dumped them right back out in your yard, what's gonna happen the next night? Frogs gonna keep, that's what we're doing with these violent criminals. I'm asking the media, to inform the public about the criminal backgrounds of the people that we arrest and the people you'll see that get indicted and the people with these gun charges, should they have even been out? That's my challenge to you. I'm excited about this initiative. I'm excited working with the, the local prosecutor, the, the district prosecutor, James Stewart and Alec Van Hook. And what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna renew this again. We've been doing this and doing it and doing it. It's time that we took this so seriously that we stopped it. It's time that kids quit having to sleep in bathtubs at night because they're scared of people driving by and shooting through their house. 
I got news for you. These people driving by shooting through their house have driven by and shot through other people's houses. Let's wake up. Hopefully this initiative will wake you up. Thanks. Thank you, Sheriff, Judge Stewart, Mr. Alec. I always appreciate following Sheriff Prater. I could just get up here and say ditto, exa exactly what he said. Um, very valid points made by the three previous speakers. The only, the only comments that I could add to it is that every citizen, every parent, every coach, every teacher, every neighbor, every lawful firearm owner has a role in this fight. It's up to you to make sure your weapons stay locked up and not in the hands of those not mature enough or uh, not legally able to possess those weapons. If you're having problems with children, it's up to you to seek guidance from Volunteers for Youth Justice or one of the other projects available to, uh, to assist you with some of their youth programs or Family in Need of Services programs. The Caddo Juvenile Court System has options available to you. Uh, if you know about violence that's going to occur, we need to be proactive in our response. So it's, I appreciate the hard work done by our homicide investigators when we take a killer off the streets, but I would much more appreciate a violent person be taken off the streets prior to them committing that crime. And that requires we get some community involvement. If you know that there's a rift or a beef or a fight between, between individuals or groups of individuals, you need to notify law enforcement at that opportunity so we can take uh, that, that actions before it results in somebody's death or someone being injured. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be glad to take some questions for you. I also think that everyone here, if, if you want to do some kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, off-camera interviews or on-camera interviews after this, I think the people will be glad to do that as well. So if anybody has any questions for any of us, we'd be glad to take those or, or we can take yeah. other questions. What is the difference between Operation Rogan and Operation Safe Neighborhood? And how do you program? Yeah. A pro pro Project Safe Neighborhoods and Project Guardian are, are, are the department's kind of mainstay, Department of Justice mainstay fight against violent crime. Operation Legend came about this summer when we started seeing, tragically, too many children again getting, uh, you know, getting in the line of fire. And the department targeted significant resources to certain Operation Legend cities. Shreveport is not an Operation Legend city, but the Attorney General has directed all the United States attorneys to, to to bring the spirit of Oper Operation Legend to all of our cities. And the Attorney General has directed all the United States attorneys to direct resources to this effort. And there's nothing more important to this office right now. You know, we have some of the, the finest prosecutors in the world working here. And right now, other cases are going to take the back burner until this violent crime trend starts to turn down again. I mean, we are committed to saving our city and putting the resources that we need into fighting violent crime. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, certainly we don't, we, the United States doesn't release reports until the case is done. But, you know, we have a system of justice that's public. You know, we want, we want the public to have confidence in what we do. You don't want to try people and send people to prison in secret. You know, people, people have a right. And so a, a right to have the public know what's going on. People have a right to an open and fair and free trial. But we do our best to try to pre prevent, prevent victims. Our office and the DA's office, they, we all have a, victim coordinators and we can pro help provide, you know, things to help keep them safe when we know about it. We just do the best we can. Not saying that it should be a private uh, case or whatever. I'm saying, like, why does it have to be released to the public to be put out because all it does, I understand, it's I'm saying that it should be Yeah, I'll defer to Judge Stewart on that because we don't, we don't release reports until the case is done. We don't release uh, information of victims' names. The, the, the only information that the public is entitled to, that has to be a 
48 hour affidavit filled out by law enforcement in order to set a bond. Uh, once that information is released, our office is any ongoing case, we don't release it. We don't file uh, information. We don't make comments about cases. Uh, so from that standpoint, uh, we don't do it. We always get public records requests from the news media and, they, and they're actually, it's a given truck. They want to know the information. They say the public has the right to know and we do exactly what the law tells us to do. If we have to give them information, we do. If we don't, we don't give it. I understand what you're saying, okay? So our first thing is to protect victims and witnesses and their names to the best that we can. We don't give our grand jury information. We don't say who testified in the grand jury. We don't say who we may have talked to. We don't put any of that information out there. But the law does have some parameters that allows certain information to go out into the public, and that's not anything we can do about it. And that's not anything Chief Raymond or anybody do. They have to fill information out. They have to give it to the judges, and that information is public. But I think they try to do a good job of only putting what they have to put in it and not everything else. Okay, I, I thought I heard a question in there somewhere. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Anybody else have a question? But, but, but I don't think I'm going to say, Mike, this. this, this. That's what we're
specific numbers. It's an operational integrity and, and safety for officers. We, people don't need to know how many officers are on the street at certain times of the day because criminals are going to take that information and say, I'm going to commit crimes in this neighborhood at this time of day. So we don't release that information. We are short staffed, but you wouldn't know it on patrol. We have our officers working 16 hour shifts. Some are volunteering, some are being voluntold to make sure we have adequate number of officers on patrol on a daily basis. And so you'll continue to see that. The fewer officers we have just means the ones we do have work harder. Uh, and that's not a long term fix, but that's going to get us through the recruiting problems we are having. But I can assure you, you've got just as many officers in the streets today, uh, a required staffing number in every district per every shift as you've always had. It's just you may have the same officer out there two shifts in a row. Okay, thank you all for coming. As I said, uh, some of us will be around. If you want to ask some other questions, we'll be glad to help you with them. Thank you for coming.